What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist and I'm here with Gersh1 And today we're back at it answering more questions from you guys in another installment of 1, 2, 3, 4, The Greater yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer If you have a question for us, comment down below Put question in front of your question because we get to those questions first And that is what Sean OG Prendergast did He asks Well lads, what's the crack? Greetings from Ireland. I just bought a ton of 3D party guardsmen to represent my Tanith first and only army. What's your opinion slash take on using 3D printed minis or even 3D printed models on the tabletop? <laughs> That's funny because you said 3D printed where it's third party guardsmen, third party minis and 3D printed minis. Yes, all of that. <laughs> yeah. So basically non-GW stuff being used to play 40k, Age of Sigmar, etc. Yeah. And I honestly like if because we play within like a group and we're usually in somebody's house, um, I don't ever care. Like it's you, you know go for it um, as long as you're not being um, as long as like you're not using Lego models for Terminators <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, using pennies as uh, wolves if you're playing space wolves. But one of the ones that I I do uh, or I have seen us use a lot is the uh, Sisters of Battle. Before the Sisters of Battle had plastic minis, what are they called? Like uh, something heroes. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. It's a company that we follow on Instagram. So if you follow us on Instagram, just look through our follows and mm -hmm. like they're raging minis, ra raging heroes, or something, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, but they use a 3D printed or they use um, that's a third party company mm -hmm. for sisters of battle i also use them for assassins in in uh, 40k because i don't really like the assassin models and honestly like yeah i mean it doesn't really matter right there are so many third party companies out there that make really great stuff like if you're looking for really like big intimidating looking demons creature caster has some like awesome looking sculpts yeah and it's like why isn't GW producing something of this scale, of this magnitude? And if they do, it's usually Forge World, and the prices are, like, skyrocketing. And that's really what, like, I think the big flaw for GW is. Like, uh, the 3D, or the third party, or the 3D printed models are the ones that GW's not really, like, paying attention to. Mm -hmm. Even though we don't have any Eldar three or third party yeah, creators. That's true. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, and I feel like they have been neglecting the Eldar line for a really long time. Right, to the point where, like, if you want to play the Eldar, sometimes you got to bust out metal models. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the paint's going to rub off. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, th go for it, I would say. Um, Obviously, if you're really into the competitive, playing the meta, um, there's no way around it. If you're going to be playing at a GW, at tournaments, you have to play their models. And for the most part, it's what you see is what you get. So that might mean having to buy five of the same kit to outfit all these guys with the one gun that only comes with one per sprue. Yeah. So that's like a huge downside. I mean, yeah, you'll have a bunch of extra bits. You could always sell it on eBay or something like that. But... It, 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 their practice at doing things like that has gotten notorious and a little over the top. Mm -hmm. um, I can see GW why they want you to use their models to play their game because obviously it's a company, they need the profits to, to keep everything going. But at the same time, when prices go up every other like month, it seems like it's, it's crazy. Yeah, the only other uh, problem too I see is that um, base sizes might be different. True. But if you look at the old orc boys, their ba base size is a lot smaller than the new base size. So does that mean that we're supposed to switch all the old orc boys with the new base sizes? Nobody does that. Right. Uh, so it's it's, it's kind of tricky, and it really depends on, like, you know, where you're playing. Who you're playing against, yeah. And I don't know what the rule is if you're going to a tournament and you have, like, old uh, bases for the orc boys uh, where they're almost as small as... Um, the Gretchen bases, mm -hmm. uh, which that might actually play into a certain mechanic or something like, especially with range. Yeah, deep um, strike and whatnot. Yeah, but we don't really like care too much, right? No, nah, for the most part, we <laughs> just play to have fun, and it's like, oh, you got that cool looking model. Oh, it's a demon prince. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing that I was gonna mention because I play the Raging Heroes Sisters for Assassins. After a while, after a couple games, I felt like, hmm. Like, it doesn't feel the same. And then the same thing happened with the... There's another company that makes orc models a lot. Cr Cromlech? Yeah, Cromlech. 
I don't really like the look of the orcs for the Cromlech line, so I I have some, but I've never actually played them on the tabletop for that reason that they look way too different. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same with even like if I were to take the the D or the the orcs, the new orcs from Age of Sigmar, and play them as orcs now in in 40k, I would feel weird because they don't even look the same. No, yeah, they, they got a vastly different feel to it. Yeah, but yeah, that's 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 all my take. Right. Let us know what you guys think. Um, and do you prefer like GW official models because you are playing the game? Yeah. Or not? This next question comes from Truntun or Trontun. <laughs> I don't know. Is there any blank space marine? And if not, is it possible that, that a genetic flaw would make a successor chapter one full of gnolls and or pariahs? So initially there was, it was the Exorcist chapter, yeah. but I think that lore has completely changed. Right, they've retconned it in the White Dwarf. They said, these exorcists that are meant to fight like demons and have like really badass lore, nah. They're just successors of the, um, crit, no, R Imperial Fist. Yeah, yeah. Rogel Dorn and all that, yeah. Dorn. Um, that's not to say we, that's not a thing. There could be a successor chapter out there that maybe got lost in the warp, maybe it's on a penitent crusade. Um, or maybe it could be one of the lost Primarchs, and that's why they got expunged, because they were all blanks, pariahs. Yeah. Uh, you could always work with a lore to make your own, you know, fan lore that makes sense. Yep. And the way you would do it, too, like, in the lore, if you're homebrewing, uh, remember that most, um, you could either be a planet, uh, or a, a Space Marine chapter that is on Crusade, or one that has a home planet, but they could be hiring like um, certain uh, ships to go around collecting blanks, or even have a some type of agreement with the Sisters of Silence or Sisters, yeah, Sisters of Silence, Sisters right? of Silence with yeah. the black ship to actually um, collect some of their their recruits. That'd be actually really cool because then you could use Sisters of Silence as a mercenary faction within your Space Marine faction. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you would do about the rules though, but yeah, yeah, it's a little iffy. Next question. Juan Jose Mendivil. How would the Dark Eldar handle Pinhead if Pain actually empowers him? Because as far as I know, he'd be invulnerable. So Pinhead is... You know who that is, right? Yeah, the, from the horror stuff? Yeah, yeah. like the horror movies. Um, I've never seen that movie. So, But if he does get power from Pain, that's similar to how the Dark Eldar get like their... Their juices flowing from inflicting pain, so it'd be interesting to see. But I don't think he could defend himself from like warp powers and stuff like that. So. No warp <laughs> flame. Yeah. I th um, there was a similar question last week where if we were, or they were talking about like, would a psyker hurt a, a blink? Oh, that's right. Yeah. At the end of the day, fire still fire. It's gonna burn you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see, or maybe if you could convert like a far seer into pinhead. Or even better, have like a chaos uh, lord as Pinhead. That'd be that cool. would be cool. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you could find some th third party like miniature models that are mm -hmm. of Pinhead. Hopefully they're the size. Yeah. This next question comes from J Day. Do the Great Knights have tech marines? Could they even train on Mars considering their existence is supposed to be a secret? Yes. Yes. Uh, they do have tech marines. Um, they're actually pretty good because you could put one like near a Dread Knight. At least back in the previous edition, you could have a Dread Knight use Astro Aim and shoot behind cover, and you could still hit things without line of sight, um, and just have the Tech Marine buff it whenever it does take damage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're there, they train, they still do their thing. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from Peter S. Are, the current, are there currently more Tyranids or Greenskins in the 40k galaxy? Thanks. I would argue that there's more green skins. Yeah, orcs for sure. Um, because I feel like there's probably more Tyranids, but they're outside of the galaxy. Yeah, especially if you like pay attention to the uh, battle fleet gothic um, like clips and stuff like that. Because <coughs> that's like, it's the entire galaxy being shadowed by the Tyranid <laughs> yeah. swarm that's coming for them. Yeah, so there's a ton of them. A ton. But there's also much more orcs currently. Yeah. Miami Milkman, do you think Tuska will become a Krork? No. <laughs> Tuska the Demon Killer will probably stay in the warp forever because it's a really badass story and he's just... 
I don't know if he's getting bigger though. That's like the big yeah, mystery like the question there. Because he gets revived every single day, but like in in order for an orc to keep growing, doesn't that mean that he can't die? So, he, but he does die every day. <laughs> so if he does die, does he get reset or does it all just pile up? Yeah, is it a Groundhog Day type of situation? <laughs> yeah. Uh, next question comes from Mike K. How would Tyranids fare against the Plague Marines and the ministration of Nurgle? <laughs> um, well, overall, Nurgle and Tyranids, they have fought before. Um, it's the same thing as anything else. Uh, inflict a Tyranid with, like, toxins and poisons and stuff like that, and they'll die. But eventually, all that stuff gets sent back to the hive mind, and they'll find a way to become impervious to those diseases. So they could, Tyranids could be very beneficial to Nurgle in that manner. Yep, almost like Isha. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, and speaking of Nurgle and Isha, Brian B says, since Nurgle stole Isha from Slanesh, does that mean that he is stronger? Uh, no, I think he's just sneakier, yeah. like a trickster. I think they said something akin to like Slanesh being the youngest god born or birthed or whatever um that nurgle just kind of wanted to show slanesh like who's the boss like hey we got seniority here yeah Zoink. <laughs> and they this they know the block better mm-hmm. than slanesh uh next question comes from uh the big one when i get old do you think nurses will give me sexy sponge baths baths <laughs> baths <laughs> baths i think that's everybody's like when I get older, I hope this happens, but nah. Yeah, and if you start like a good uh, savings plan, you won't need to <laughs> to worry about nurses because you could just you know go to Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. It's like these nurses do these these things day in and day out. It's like routine for them. Yeah, I don't think like I think at that age though, if anything, you should fear your nurses, <laughs> based on all the craziness that's been shown. Yeah. Uh, next question. This one is by PB Unit. Are there warps in other galaxies? No, as yeah. far as we know. Yeah, because we don't really get to know much of the outside of the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, we know that the Tyranids came from out of there. We know that the Silent King left the galaxy and now he's back. Um, but for the most part, yeah, we don't know about any other galaxies and like the warp. As far as we know, it's just contained here. Yep. You could make the argument that because the Tyranids came into this galaxy with the shadow of the warp, there should be another warp, but you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know, but maybe, or maybe they developed it on the on the way here. There have also been rumors that Tyranids have existed in this galaxy for a really long time, but they were just like, um, what is it called? The Scouts, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have the Loch Ness Monster, the Kraken on Fenris. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Littlefoot, for that matter. Yeah. Next question comes from Ace Leonidas. Do plague marines need to eat? Sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what they're eating? It doesn't matter. Rocks? Some menudo? Oh, yeah. This one's by Justice777FUL. What is a soul? <laughs> <laughs> That's deep. We can go in and at a whole different angle. Uh, but basically, it's the essence of what makes you, you. The thing that powers beliefs, the chaos gods, and um, the thing that put gets put inside soul stones if you're an Eldar. Exactly, yeah. What it is, I don't know, I picture it looking like space dust. Yeah. Or like the bubbles from that one Disney movie with bubbles. Like where they're aliens and they're just like bubbles. Um... Mars needs moms. Is that one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um. Next question. Tommy Falcon, are the Necrons able to replicate the technology that turned them from Necron tier to Necrons? And would the Mechanicus ever consider trying this if they could get their hands on this tech? No, for the first bit, because it's like the Catan, the full fledged Catan, not mm-hmm. shards, uh, were the ones powering <laughs> that. Oop. Um. And for the second part, would the tech marines, some of them would probably. Yeah. Eternal he, life. Yeah, I guess he likes Skitari legions being made to this or something like that. Yeah. Next question. This one is by Tommy Falcon once again. 
Considering how hard it is to get rid of orcs, how they spread, grow, etc., would Nurgle ever try to weaponize them into a kind of bioweapon or disease to ravage a sector while also spreading his rot? Not, I mean, there are Nurgle orcs, yes. Mm -hmm. So Nurgle has used orcs, but the orc biology is so resilient that it's kind of difficult. Yeah. So he's better off just using other creatures, mm -hmm. like humans. Yeah, not just that, but if an orc senses there's something going on with the orc next to him, he's going to kill him. Yeah, like even orc. if he's not. <laughs> <laughs> this orc is kind of stinky. Yeah, won't Dead. kill him. <laughs> um, next question. Ethan says... Do the cultists, space marines, and other human traders get protection from the gods they serve when they enter the warp? Or do the desidens of the warp just get free reign on them? Free reign. Yeah. They terrorize them. They mess them up. If you ever want to watch like a representation of this, check out Death of Hope by Mark Lewis Spark. Um, and when the space marines are walking, or the chaos space marines are walking down the uh, it's like a corridor or whatever, um, there's a cultist behind him, and he looks to, to the side, and he sees the demons, like, replicating his walking pattern, kind of, like, messing with him. Uh, and that's a representation of, like, even in, even when you're on the evil, like, on the chaos' side, chaos, chaos demons are still trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. Or cause pain, havoc, chaos, all that kind of stuff. Right. He did a really good job of, of making that representation. A lot of skulls everywhere, too. Mm -hmm. This one is by Don Krill. Have you guys ever tried to play 40k with a different rule system? I have some issues with many differences in units and weapons, but most of all the I go, you go system. I'm learning the bolt action game right now where both units on sides get randomly activated and it adds more tactical gameplay. I think I can adapt the rules and play 40k with this. Is this stupid or interesting? <laughs> Sorry for bringing up a different game system. Nice haircut, Alchemist. <laughs> Keep doing your fine work on this channel. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I told them to cut more off the top, and they said no. That's never happened. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've played 40k <coughs> using like a checkers type matchup, where you got to shoot them in the jetpack to do extra damage. Yep. Um, but yeah, for the most part, we just kind of keep... keep Keep up with the most recent rules. I think we have tried um, doing the kind of Age of Sigmar thing of That's like right. rolling to see every single turn. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it is fun. It adds tactical um, things. But it could also like completely mess things up. Because range is so important. Like I feel like if you're a Tau player and you get two turns, you're going to blow up your opponent to pieces. Yes, definitely. He's done. Uh, the activation of different units is also something that would be really fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, we we should try that, like maybe yeah. for a Halloween special or something like that. Yes, um, that would be something. fun. Yeah, it'd be interesting to kind of figure out what, like, in what order to play that out. Yeah, especially during combat, because that's going to make things a little wonky. Yeah, I think though, the main thing about uh, the current ninth edition is that they're trying to streamline everything and uh, make everything super simple. I remember 7th edition was so confusing. <laughs> um, so, like, maybe adding that whole, like, certain units go before other units might make it a little bit more confusing, too. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. More. Well, one more question. This one's by Chameleon Yoga Studio. Do you think Gilliman is secretly working to get rid of the Emperor and take over? No. Uh, if anything, Gilliman is, like, as loyal as loyalists can get. Yep. Um... Because if he was trying to do that, like, wouldn't he wouldn't he have just like killed the emperor when he had the chance? Right. I mean, he's already got his sword. Um, he was empowered by the emperor, so these are all things that kind of. And he's fighting for the, the humanity and the Imperium. It's not like he's branching off and trying to reclaim the galaxy for himself. So, yeah, he's he's not doing that. I think the conversation between the emperor and Gilliman must have been like really really like badass, and it's a bummer that it hasn't been translated in any of the novels that I know of yet. Um, because it is one of those situations where, like, Gilliman's probably going to look at his dad and be like, you're letting them worship you after you told us not to. Yeah. And then the Emperor's going to look at Gilliman and be like, you're using Xenotechnology <laughs> to keep you alive? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting. But, yeah, those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll talk tomorrow. Yeah, this has been The Sound Alchemist. Gershwan. And we are out. <laughs> Oh, if you could put my
Freedom Fest. You know.